Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette, this is Board Game Inquisition and welcome to October's Monthly Roundup, the video where I talk about the changes to my board game collection over the past month. Hi everybody and welcome to my Monthly Roundup video for October. Um, this month has gone pretty quick, right? I'd like, I always evaluate the speed of the month right at the start of my video because that's clearly, you know, important in 2020, measuring time. Um, and this has been an interesting month collection wise because I, I don't know if you listened to the last episode, I declared I was not going to buy any board games this month. Um, did I hold true to my statement? You're going to find out in just a minute. Um, and for those of you new to this format, welcome. Um, this is the video where I talk about the changes to my board game collection, some games I've been playing, some games maybe I'm looking forward to, a bit of general chit chat. And of course, as always, I encourage you to shout off in the comment box below and tell me, you know, how your gaming's been going this month. Um, I really, really love hearing from people. I think it's so fun to get an insight into your lives. Um, so yeah, so this is not a, a one-way one discussion I'm having. I hope. <laughs> um, I hope. So yeah, it's been, yeah, October has been quick. Um, and sure, have I got a lot of games played? No, not as many as I would have liked. It's not been the most amazing month, but sure, uh, we'll see all that as it goes. So instead of wasting your time, I'll jump right into the first section of this video, which talks about new acquisitions and games I've acquired. So we're going to start with some games that I actually bought last month but didn't make it here till the start of October so they get into this monthly roundup instead of the previous one. Um, my rule is if the game isn't in my hands it hasn't arrived yet or I haven't bought it yet in inverted commas. So the first game required this month is a leftover from the previous month and this is the very very lovely and much anticipated bonfire from Stefan Feld. As you may have noticed, Feld has had two new releases in within a month of each other. And I've looked at and reviewed the Castles of Tuscany already, if you want to go and check that out. Um, yeah, that was a, a tough review for me. Um, but yeah, people seem to like it. Um, so Bonfire then is definitely kind of the longer and more intricate of the two games. Now it has a theme, <laughs> one I find kind of difficult to describe sometimes, but I think at its core the game is about um, lighting bonfires. And to do this you kind of need to go and pray to the guardians and they come and help you, you know, light the bonfires. Something like that. There's also trolls involved and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I suppose theme, and you know what, there is one there. Um, I will say the artwork is really nice, which is unusual for a Euro game. If you want to see what's inside the box, I've unboxed it, not reviewed it yet, because um, it's definitely the more complex title. Um, it's an interesting one in the sense that there are very different areas of the board in which you are doing specific things and they are all somehow connected together. So you want to like light bonfires on your own player board and you want to, you know, put little guardians in around them for points. Um, to get the guardians, however, you have to go on the part of the board that's like the ocean and you sail your way to their islands and make tributes and stuff to acquire them. And then there's also the big kind of bonfire wheel of doom, as I fondly call it, in which you spin the bonfire around to get bonuses from certain sections. Like there are very distinct parts to this game um, and very obviously the delineated by the board and your player board um, but yet they're somehow all kind of necessary to make each other work. In my mind it doesn't feel as fluid a puzzle as some of his other titles where it feels like you could really do a little bit of anything to win um, but I've really not played it enough yet to get a good feel for it. It's definitely um, much more involved, um, you know, than, well, Castles of Tuscany or Castles of Burgundy. It's definitely a heavier title, so it needs more plays, basically. Um, I feel like I know where it's going, but I still don't feel like I've fully figured it out yet. And I've played it two to three times so far. I love how it is, two or three, I'm trying to remember which. I, I will say two to be on the safe side. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to play it again. It, it's, it's very interesting, I think, in how it's put together, but it feels like there are a lot of things going on and how important each of those things are to actually perform. Um, yeah, I'm not certain yet, but it's got a lot of promise. I do think you also get a, a lot of value for money. There's a lot of stuff in the box. So yeah, so that's Bonfire from Stefan Feld. Um, if any of you have been playing it, let me know what you think. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's super, super pretty. Okay, so the second game then to have come from leftover from last month um, is the very curious Panamax. Doo -doo -doo. So Panamax um, is a game about shipping. 
and, and specifically shipping through the Panama Canal. It's a game I saw a review um, from on the Shut Up and Sit Down channel many, many moons ago, back when Paul did reviews. Um, and it was something we kind of liked the sound of because what's, what's, what's fun about this is, um, well, it's an economic game for starters and the board is a map of the Panama Canal. And what you do is you put your little dice on ships and you run your ships through the locks um, that are in the canal to get out to the other side to deliver goods. Um, so the aim of the game is to make money, but there's these really interesting push and pull going on where if there's already a boat stuck in a lock and you come up behind it, you push the boat in front of you. So it makes it a very interactive game. And I'd heard a lot of issues about it. You know, you really need a lot of players to be able to make it more interactive, which kind of makes sense and is probably very, very true. Um, but when we came across this game for relatively cheap, we were like, why not try it? You know, let's give it a go. Um, and we liked it. The rule book is one of the worst rule books I've come across in a while. It's a very special level of hell, that rule book. It's one of the few times where I've taken it off of my husband and I, I've read the paragraph about, you know, what it is we're doing. And it didn't seem to relate to board games or anything at all. I was like, this is just gibberish. Um, so we watched um, a how to play video, which is a fairly rare thing for us in our house um, to get it to sit all together. But overall, I think Panamax is a very clever little game. I like the tension in it because how it works is that you have your own private money, um, the comp your company has its own money and the aim of the game is to have your own money at the end. Um, and you have shares in this company, so they pay out. But you need to make sure the company made enough money from all the shipping that can afford to pay you. So you've got to watch for the times when you need your sh you need your company to have money and when you don't. And I thought this was really, really interesting, actually. I think I liked it better than my husband did. Um, but overall, I think this is a really, really cool game. I think it's super smart. Um, does it need more players to play with? Probably. I, I think we, I definitely felt like we were missing a trick or that we needed a dummy player to really enhance our own game. Um, but overall, I think it's a fine game. I was quite impressed with Panamax. So that is the last of the games I bought because <laughs> I didn't buy any this month. Ha 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 ha. I have survived. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that, I suppose, at the end. What it was like having a, a month of no new games. Well, not quite new games, but not buying any games. As for review copies, um, I'm super excited to announce that uh, Macaron has arrived here today, um, which is a lovely little trick-taking game that's gonna be coming to Kickstarter, I believe on the 20th of next month. So I got to get my ass in gear and get that ready to go. Um, keep your eyes peeled for announcements about that. Um, and then we'll get to the really, really fun part of this, which is going to be trades. Um, so yeah, so I wanna know, have you been buying any new games this month? Did you buy anything at Eschenspiel Digital? How did you all feel about that? I didn't like it a whole lot. I was very confused and a little bit bamboozled and wasn't really sure where I could have bought things had I wanted to, so I'm just waiting for them to come out to the shops. But I'd love to hear if you picked anything up. Right, so the trade section. This is an interesting month for trades because as we said, we weren't going to buy any games, but we did manage to trade for some. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so the first game that has arrived as a result of trading is, and allow me to read the date on this correctly. So it is Space Corp 2025 to 2380. I fondly call it Space Corp because the rest of that is just a date. Um, and this is a game about space. <laughs> unsurprisingly. Um, you see, we're at the part in our trading kind of cycle where there are very few games we actually want anymore that we're searching for games to add to our want and trade list because we have so many we want to trade away. Um, and this is one I'd seen um, board game rants talk about if you are into solo tabletop gaming and more. Um, that's the guy you want to be checking out. And he's come up with it before and I, I find that he likes games that I kind of like as well, kind of the heavy Euro thing. So when I saw that he was liking this, I thought, oh, I'll put it on our for trade list. Maybe, you know, I'll get to trade someday. And today is that day. So I've not played this one yet, um, but I will say the box art is very impressive and dodgy. This game looks old. Um, it comes from GMT Games, and I've heard this is a feature of their titles. Although I didn't feel like Twilight Struggle looked that old but there you go um so yeah it looks like something very much from like the 1990s um on the box i was hoping the inside would be a little better um the game board itself looks good the components are well made but they are on the fugly side 
Um, but you know what? I won't hold that against a game. I much prefer seeing how it plays. And it looks like basically you're colonizing in space. You're starting in Earth and you're leading your way out. Um, the interesting thing about this game is that it's got different phases. So you can play the first phase where you're leaving Earth and then you flip over a board and you attach another board to your board. Um, all kinds of shiny things that um, I hadn't heard of before. It does take a, a bit of time to play according to the box. So we actually got it set up to play and then I just got too tired to actually play it. I took one look, I was like, this is a lot. I'd like to give this a bit more time than I'm capable of doing right now. So I'm looking forward to playing it. I actually think it looks really, really cool. Um, and yeah, if you've played it, let me know a little bit more. Maybe some secrets or tips you can give me for how to play well. Um, but yeah, so far so good. I'm not gonna judge it just yet till I, you know, actually give it a go. So the next two items on the list are part of a new type of trading that we've never tried before, um, a math trade. So I've never done one. My husband, well, was in charge of it. He, he usually is in charge of all the selling and buying or trading of games. And we had a math trade here in Ireland. So it's our first one ever. And some games for those have been showing up. So how this works is that you post up a list of all the games you want to trade away um, and so does everyone else involved and then you mark what of your games you'd be willing to trade for other people's games and then they do a whole mass jumble so that people send games to the people who want them then to the people who want them. So for example we've received games from people but we did not send them games someone else did. So it's kind of a cool idea it's a new concept for us and so we have four games that we have for trade two of which have arrived and interesting enough because my husband picked all of these these are all games he wanted and I would not have chosen so the first two to arrive and um, we'll start with Super Dungeon Explorer um, it's got a special name at the end of it because it's not just Super Dungeon Explorer Super Dungeon Explorer Forgotten King that's the full title and I didn't know anything about this game really it sounded like another dungeon crawler did we need one of those are we playing the ones we have not really um, this seemed completely extraneous to me so um, it was the first game to arrive and for all the you know love and holy <laughs> that's not even a phrase it looks just like Arcadia Quest if anybody's familiar with that we have a copy of Arcadia Quest Inferno whatever kind of version that is and it basically this is a game with a bunch of little miniatures they're very very cute and adorable and they're characters and you're going to move them around dungeons and do things yeah that that's what this game seems to be um <laughs> do i think we needed it no do i think it looks kind of fun yes um i love it when there's a good you know set of miniatures or whatever you can get behind you know you're like i definitely want to play with this one and see what happens and what seems to be special about this one is that there are a bunch of pets included so there's like a chicken and a puppy and a cat you know that that has endeared me to this game a bit um but as always i am happy to trade away games that we're not playing for games we might play or have not played at all um we trade with not a lot of kind of value of game in mind but rather that you know something we might actually be playing so that's the first arrival not got to play that yet either this is all literally within the space of the last day or so and then the second thing is camel up plus the camel up expansion which claims on the cover you can now play with up to 10 people um yeah covid needs to know this <laughs> 10 people um so yeah camel up as far as i'm aware is a racing game about camels i'm sure many of you are familiar with it i'm way behind the times and having not played it um my issue against having got this is that it's a racing game and racing games um while they're definitely one of my husband's favorite type of games you want a group of people to play them i think playing one-on-one -on -one racing games is just not as entertaining um, but he got his wish um so we now have camel up with camels and extra bits and cardboard pyramid and stuff so um, we'll have to give that a go and see how it rolls well didn't were there dice i think there were dice in the box we'll have to see what happens so those are all of the trades um the last two you'll have to wait till next month to hear about um but it was it was nice having games show up in the the mail again yay because it's been quite a quiet month without anything to unpack and things like that what about you guys have you managed any trading or things like that i've noticed a lot of people um trying to sell games at this time of year or to trade them all and stuff people seem much more amenable to that maybe you know they need some money coming up to christmas or you want to get different games that are just coming out um so yeah if you don't trade i encourage you to try it out i think i think it's great yeah there's a lot of faith there between you and the person you're trading with you know it's not it's not set in stone it's not exact but um yeah i like it a lot i like and i like what i get out of it because now i have a whole bunch of new things to try instead of those games i wasn't playing at all um so yeah 
Right, so let me know if you got anything this month, if you managed to trade for anything, because I think that's always fun um, and whatnot. And we will move on to the next section, which is games I've been playing. So games I've been playing. Um, there are definitely few and far between this last month. The last month has been kind of tough. So, you know, when you don't really care about living, it's kind of hard to care about playing board games as well. So what I have been playing were things that needed playing. So a lot of the reviews and things like that, I, I worked really hard and, you know, make getting those games played so I could create content. Um, and also as always, I'm working through kind of the, the new game pile because I don't like having games sitting around. Um, but I did get to play some fun things this month, I suppose, that I just want to tell you about because, you know, some games just need talking about. Um, and the first one of these is Zia Legends of Adrift System. Um, and this is a big, big space game and I'm really, really, really fond of it. So I picked this up, I think, before Christmas last year because it seemed like the perfect game for kind of winter nights around Christmas to play with your friends. I've, I have friends who like space games, you know, it all fitted in kind of nice. Um, it is a game that isn't really designed for two players, um, but we played it two players anyway um, and we managed okay, just not as interactively as most. But um, it's a really open world, I suppose you want to call it sandbox game where you can kind of do whatever you want you start off with a little ship and you're in a system and you can go exploring you can go trading goods you can go shoot up baddies you can go be the good guy um all sorts of stuff there's loads of things that happen and they you interact with the board as you go around there are cards that are revealed you can upgrade your ship lots of fun stuff to be had um, also the game is of a variable length so you can play the game for as long or as short as you like which I think is super super cool um, and I, I, I like Sia a lot and so we had a friend come round before we were put into an another lockdown to play games hurrah and I was determined to show him Zia because he loves space and so we had like the most wonderful game I, I think what's special about Zia is it's very laid back it's not particularly cutthroat or anything like that it's just chill it is just like chill time in space and I think that's perfect for you know when you're not feeling in the mood to you know calculate exactly how many victory points I need to win on this turn we were just you know floating around space picking up stuff shooting each other you know just just having fun um, and my friend really really enjoyed it and I was reminded with how much I enjoy it I think Zia is a cracking game it's really really good and it's very very well put together I would love to get my hands on the expansions because apparently you can play it solo with one of the expansions and another one I think makes it better at two players and it adds kind of extra bits and bobs and I don't normally believe in expansions but I I think this is one of those games where I want to be a bit of a completionist I kind of I want to have it all have it all together and then when I take it out once or twice a year because it is kind of that game kind of game although I think you could play it more often than that but for us it's definitely an event game um, I would just love to have it all together to be able to pull it out and play, you know, whenever I felt like it. So Zia is a, is a great space game in my mind. I think it's my favourite one. Does it be Terraforming Mars? I don't know. I wouldn't even put it in the same league as Terraforming Mars. There's such different styles of games. But if you wanted something exploration-y and stuff like that, then this is, this is it. So have you tried it before? And if not, what's your favourite space game? Um, I'm waiting for the influx of Twilight Imperium people, um, which, uh, you know, I don't mind Twilight Imperium, <laughs> but I'd love to hear what, what, game, what game you love about space. This is the second space game on my list today. Okay, so that's the first one I'm going to talk about. The second game I'm going to talk about is one that arrived last month, and so I didn't get to tell you what it was about. I think I actually lied to you in when I said what well, um, London is about from Osprey Games, from Martin Wallace this super, super cheap pickup for a tenner. I've seen it be cheap um, and go up and down a little bit on Amazon, but finally it was a tenner and I was like, okay, can't be that bad, can it? <laughs> so I finally got to play London. And London is an engine building game in which you are an architect after the great fire of London and you're helping rebuild the city. Um, and it, so it's, a, it's an engine builder with cards and you draft cards kind of into your tableau to, to build money or to gather money from your boroughs and things like that. And the real weird thing about it all is that the more buildings you put out, the more poverty you get. And so you're trying to manage your poverty versus your income. And it's the meanest mechanic ever. I cried so hard I could not get rid of my poverty. <laughs> Um, I think the cards are really interesting actually how some of them fit together and I really really like the artwork the artwork is amazing so um, 
<laughs> don't know where that came from. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen I have pictures of it up, I think, last week. Um, and it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's very chill and kind of easy and, and it's cutthroat all in its own way. It's not a very interactive game. At least we didn't play it that way. Maybe maybe it could be. Um, but I liked it a lot. It was very, very pleasant. Not too taxing on the brain and stuff. Just, you know, do I have more money than black cubes? Ah, but I had nightmares about the poverty cubes sadness people sadness um so yeah so that is london um yeah i liked i liked that a lot for the price of it there's a lot of game in there so that was always impressive so yeah london all right so what was the last thing i'm going to talk about check my list ah yes so i posted about this in my five things i love about section that i put out in the tuesday i hope most of you have noticed that that exists by now but i was talking about glenn moore um so glenn moore is an older game um it's published by rio grande games and ravensburger it's in the alia series though which is very confusing it's like the lit one of those little ones and it is a game about being scottish <laughs> yes yeah, so if you like clans of clan of clans of caledonia um this is kind of the micro version um, in which it is a tile placement game that you're filling out your kind of your fiefdom I want to call it um, but every round you draft a tile from like a roundel love a roundel and the person who's in last position gets to go first so and you move as far up as you want on the roundel to get whatever tile you like but that means you're losing out on turns yeah 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 um the cool thing about this is you get your tile and you place it down and it activates every tile around it so there'll be tiles that will make goods um there'll be tiles that will score you victory points and stuff and you want to place your tiles in such a way that you can activate them loads to do cool things so how you build your board with all those little tiles is really important there are fun things like whiskey loch ness castles yeah i i think it's fab um it's very light it's very simple but it's it's um it's very satisfying to play i think it's so clever in its simplicity it's a super super game um so the thing to note though is this is the original glenmore since there has been released a glenmore 2 which i've not been able to try yet i would really really love to try it it's just always slightly too pricey for me um we saw it at s last year and went oh maybe maybe um and haven't picked it up within the past year it's just yeah it's just slightly too expensive um but i would really really love to try it because i love glenmore i think glenmore is a cracking game um if you've got the the second version um let me know what you think of it i've seen it it looks very very pretty it definitely looks nicer than the older one but i assume it's more of the same thing you know building your town with your your fiefdom with your tiles making them activate um and whatnot but yeah someday maybe i'll get to try it i'll put that on my like new year's resolution <laughs> list for january try glenmore too so yeah, so that's some of the games I've been playing in the past month. I want to know what you've been playing. Um, are you going to play anything spooky for Halloween as well? This is another question that's come up quite a bit. Um, yeah, because it's Halloween. Did you see my pumpkin? This is the first pumpkin I've ever carved. It's supposed to be a meeple, but it didn't really turn out the way we intended because you're not supposed to see the flame inside those things, right? But, um, you know, God loves a trier, right? So thought we'd do something nice for Halloween. But I want to know, actually, yeah, what, what games would you play on Halloween? And I was thinking about this myself, just out of my own collection. I don't have a lot of very scary games. I guess my pick would be Nyctophobia um, from Pandasaurus Games, which is a game you, you play blinded. And you play all by touch as you're trying to escape a, a murderer out of the forest. Um, very, very cool um, game. I want to play so much more of that. I need a, You need a good batch of humans to play that with. You need people who are really into it, I think. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear what your favourite Halloween games are or what you're going to play. So do tell. And also, of course, just, you know, generally what you've been playing. Right, so you've made it to the end of the board game bit. Now we'll do the chit chat bit. Um, and let's see who follows me over there. Hello and welcome, fellow traveller. <laughs> you've made it to the end of the video um yeah so hi everybody how are you keeping has it how's the last month or so been for you um i'd love to hear about how your life is going because life is funny these days isn't it 
Um, the big thing I think I want to talk about, see, I should just do the upkeeping stuff, which is there'll be a new episode of the Tabletop Inquisition podcast coming soon, where we talk about conventions. So keep your eyes peeled for that. That was a really, really fun and also sad and tragic episode because there's no spiel. Well, there was no real spiel. There was digital spiel. Um, how did people find it? I mentioned this at the start of the episode, but I don't know. To me, it just wasn't a spiel. I, f I found it very hard to browse my way through anything or find anything I wanted to find out about or like apparently it was all there I just couldn't find my way to it so I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on conventions and if you want to hear mine then there's the new episode coming out soon um other uh, miniature updates um still posting stuff on the there will be games site if you haven't checked that out yet there's loads of other content creators like myself um writing and um videoing and creating all sorts of interesting content if you want to check it out um and i genuinely mean that i'm not just trying to sell it to you because i happen to be there i genuinely think it's cool to see what other people have to say and how they do stuff um fun especially of course if you're into games like the rest of us are um and other than that this month has been a bit tough but i don't know if it's coming out the other side or not but i'm not letting it kick me on the ass yet um this has been the month of no new games um how do i feel about that the fact i didn't buy anything this month um you know what i thought i was okay with it up until the point where these trades started showing up this week and i was like god i missed having things show up in the post um i think when you're so insular like myself those little things from the postman are so important um i think that's part of the reason i like i like reviewing other people's games is because they, they come to me in the post <laughs> Um, I think there's always something special about posts because it's something coming just for you. Um, yes, and I'm not talking about builds and stuff, even though that's also the case. But there's something special about having something to look forward to, at least in my world where it's kind of small, you know. Um, but we survived, um, you know. Um, I didn't get to play as many games this month as I would have liked, but you know, sometimes I think you just have to be kind with yourself, don't you? And it's not that I don't want to play games, it's just, you know, sometimes you just, it doesn't quite happen the way you'd like. Like, it was a bank holiday weekend here last weekend, and we sat down on Saturday to play a bunch of games, and we set up two different games, and each time I was just like, I don't think I can play this, I just don't think I can manage this right now. Um, but I'm trying really, really hard to focus on the good things. Um, and I find it really hard because what I think are good things are entirely dependent on what the people around me think is good. Um, so I'm really, really chuffed, for example, with the Joan of Arc review I made this month that just went out last week. Um, and the little intro video I spent hours and hours trying to put together. Um, and I'm really proud with how it turned out. I, I wish it looked more cinematic. I have to figure out how to do that yet, but um, I really, really like it. Um, and that's the kind of thing that was holding me together that I was hoping, you know, I, I'm really proud of this. I hope other people will like it too. And of course that's really pathetic on one front, but it's also kind of the way I function. Um, yeah, I'd like, <laughs> I know, I know. I try my best to pick up on the little good things I can find and run with them, um, for as much as possible. Um, and hope other people enjoy them with me. I get so much of my own happiness from making other people happy. Um, and so, you know, I do my best to make the best content I can, um, you know, with, with my own limitations. <laughs> and it makes me happy that other people like it or enjoy it too so i'm a real sucker for all that stuff then online where people are liking your stuff and all that kind of thing i think it means a little bit more to me maybe than to other people but i've been trying really hard to distance my, myself from that too because that's not a way to live your life is it no but i'm i'm aware of how it affects me so um, in the last episode of this, I mentioned I was going to try and get a couch so I could spend more time down in the sitting room and I have succeeded. I have a new couch um, and this is why I can't afford board games because I bought a couch. So we're, um, I've been trying to spend time away from the computer so I'm not here working all of the time. Not sure of the outcome of that yet, but you gotta make an effort, don't you? You just gotta, you gotta try. It's just, it's just the way of things sometimes. But um, yeah, I've been happy with some of the stuff I've been putting out lately. I, I hope I can keep um, making it better. Um, I'm obviously open to suggestions for any improvements as long as they're kind because I am weak and weak and fragile um, to criticism. Oh gosh, yeah. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> I think we all are. 
like, you know, obviously criticism is a positive thing. It's a way to help yourself grow. But when you're just so, I don't know, anxious or whatever about what you're making and you're just happy you managed to make it, it's very hard then to hear, well, you should do this, this and this and this, you know? But um, yeah, but people have given me tips and stuff as we've gone along and I've tried my best to always update and make everything that bit better if possible. So yeah. Um, okay, so coming up in the next month, um, hopefully we will have a tapestry review. We should have a Kickstarter preview for Macaron. I keep wanting to say Macaroon, it's a very different game. Um, coming up as well. And then I guess my Patreon um, supporters are get to decide what the next, you know, review game for them will be because they chose the Joan of Arc review. Um, I'm trying not to put too much pressure on myself at this time of year. I have a problem at this time of year, November, December are always the worst for me. Just too much families, too much Christmas, too much, you know, nice people getting together. It just gets to me. Um, so I try and keep that at arm's length as best I can. And yeah, I just, I hope I continue to learn more things and do more fun stuff, I guess. Yeah, it's really vague. I also just want to play games. I'm just, I think... I, my misery has come out the other end where all I want to do is sit and play games all day. I guess there are worse things I could be doing, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's roughly like, you know, being what's going on around here with me. Yeah, I'm miserable, but I, I'm not let. I'm trying not to let it drag me down as much as possible. Like as much and all as they say about, you know, how depressing things I am, it doesn't mean I'm giving up. It just means that's my kind of, my regular state of being. That's who I am normally. Um, but yeah, but games are good, making content is good, you are good, um, and it's lovely to be able to talk to you today. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you all in the comments, that really like brightens up my life a little bit. Um, so cool, so right, um, I will see you all next month for another monthly roundup. Let's see if I hold out another month for buying no games. What do you think? We should take a vote. Say is a vote, right, right, yes. Um, if you think I will go another game, another game, another month without buying games in the comments or, or write two for no, that you don't think I'll make it or not. I would love to, I'd love to see that. That would be great. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Um, and as always, if you like what I do, you can subscribe or you can like, or you can find me on social media and say hi. It's always marvelous. And I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.